What's up? I am Sid Alexandria and you guys are in for a treat because today this is part one of two. I am going to be interviewing Vox Paranormal on YouTube in this video and in the second part he is going to be interviewing me. He also has the other video up on his channel so go check that out. His channel will be linked in the description of this video as well as the pinned comment. So go show him some love and let's hop right into it. What is it that you do and can you address the misconception about demons? <laughs> Primarily, I would say I'm a ghost hunter, and that definitely involves demons. I would say the misconception is that all demons are evil, when that's not true based on my experience. There are a lot of demons that are good and helpful, and it is major religions um, around the world that have said that demons were evil and so people are afraid of them and automatically assume if they show up that they're evil if they're there for harm but i've had demons save my life literally i'm not a demonologist or a satanist or anything like that i just talk to spirits and demons happen to fall into that category of spirits and i also think that there's other beings in that categories besides just human spirits and demons, there's angels, the fairies, uh, elves. I think things like that do exist. I've definitely talked to some fairies before, like on the spirit box, like you would do with a on a ghost hunt. And they, they told me that they were fairies, and I believe it. And I've started to develop a sense of where the spirits are at as well. Like when I go on a ghost hunt, I can kind of get a feeling to go towards them and, and and see their energy to an extent so I can see like a form or a shape and it's not like I'm just seeing that stuff all the time but when I choose to focus on it I can see that which is pretty handy for a ghost hunt you go out somewhere and you're like where are the spirits at you don't have to spend all night looking for them uh, which I have done that well as well with the equipment you follow the equipment around and you see what you find but all, now I can kind of say oh, I think Nope, definitely there's something over there, and I walk towards that, and then I pull out the equipment, and I get the readings, in, and then that's helpful for the video. But yeah, the misconception about demons is that they're all evil, and that is not accurate, in my opinion. Wow. Just like how you were like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that, that's a lot for me. We're on, like, two different sides of this whole spiritual spirit umbrella. Then if a spirit, if a demon is more on the good side then why isn't it considered an angel just because they choose like they want to be called the demon or how does that work my opinion is that to exist is to have a soul and to be more clear about that to exist is to be a soul that being the case anything that has a soul is just as real as anything else they're just people like anyone else and to say a certain group of people based on their race or species or whatever you want to call it. If we wanted to say the whole group was evil, I think that's incorrect and wrong to do that. And then demons specifically, the lore, I guess, if you want to call it that, mythology, whatever, is that the Christian God, who is also, I believe, the same thing as the Muslim God. Let's call him Yeshua, for example. Let's say that Yeshua got irritated with some of his angels and kicked them out of heaven. And if they're banned from entering heaven, that automatically categorizes an angel as a demon. But they didn't really change. They didn't stop being angels. They're just not allowed back into heaven. Okay. I think that makes sense. That's going to take me a little bit to digest, but I see what you're saying. So there can be good demons. That crushes the misconception right there. And I've actually had an experience, so I'm curious what your take on it is. If this is totally, if this person is just bonkers or if this can happen. So I have a friend who is a guy and he claims that he has this girl demon within him. Like they're sharing a body or something. Is that possible? Or have you common actually oh wow okay that's interesting 
And he says that this, and I've talked to like the demon, but now I guess I've always believed because it just seems so real. I don't know how they could fake it because he will have experiences where he doesn't remember what happened. And this demon has like taken him over and had conversations with me. And then the messages aren't saved. And then it's him and he doesn't remember. So these demons can actually, and it's not a bad demon. Like she's super nice. So they can take people over and they, the person, like the human, remember. Yes. In my experience, that doesn't happen without a person inviting them in, in some form or fashion. I don't consider demons or other beings, even humans or whatever else, to be generally malevolent, right? There are demons that are bad, just the same as there are people that are bad. So I would say it is possible most certainly that a demon would force itself some way into a human who was in some sort of weakened state. But generally speaking, if the demon's in a person and they're not being violent, not hurting the person, anything like that, the person's okay with it. In all likelihood, the person invited them in in some way. Totally possible. Tell me what it's like when you're talking to this demon. Did they give you a name? And what do you mean that they were nice? What kind of things did they say? Yeah, she calls herself Raven, and this was like years ago that this happened when I was talking to her on a pretty regular basis. She was just kind of giving me information about about what she knows as a demon and telling me things that will help um, the guy, the body that she was in. So she never did anything, you know, mean. She was just nice, just like a person. She explained it as she was always kind of in the background, like, seeing through his eyes, experiencing life, but she had to be, like, silenced in this body. And then she liked taking over and being in control when she could, so she did. Okay, that's super interesting. New experience. Uh, Explain some of the tools you use, because you mentioned, like, and I've seen it on a couple TV shows, But I think this technology is fairly new where they can pick up spirits' voices. Mm -hmm. There's actually much older technology for picking up spirits' voices. So as far as technology goes, this is a spirit box. Very cool. And what it does is it scans through radio stations really quickly. It's an effort to prove that what you're hearing from the spirits is real. The reason that it scans through radio stations quickly, it scans through, it can scan through like 16 radio stations in a second. So that's to say, hey, there is static and sound coming through here, but it's scanning through a radio station so quickly that there's no chance that any words that you hear coming through are actually words you hear on a radio station, right? So if you're going through radio stations that fast and you hear actual clear audible words coming through here, then it has to be some other explanation. So this is old technology though. This is, I don't know how old, but I've, I've seen people using these 10, 15 years ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, if you watch the first se- seasons of Ghost Adventures, that's a long time ago too. So what that is used for is really to clarify your own intuition mainly, but even if you can't, you know, pick up your intuition, you can still try to decipher what it's saying. Because I Sometimes it's not super clear, it's kind of muffled, so if you already have an idea of what they're telling you, and then you hear it, then that's confirmation, or if you can't pick up intuitively what they're saying, you can you can tell if it's clear enough what they're saying. Something along those lines. The idea is to, I think, is to prove to other people that you're not crazy when you experience <laughs> spirit stuff. Ultimately ghost hunters in general want to be able to prove scientifically or they have for a long time that the spirit world exists there are spirits and you can communicate with them so they come up with tools like this so that even if they intuitively know they can try to show people that don't intuitively know that it's real the downside with this is there is a lot of static when a spirit is trying to talk through this all the static in the radio station right it is a little bit hard to understand them sometimes over all the static. And sometimes even when they're being loud, like you can tell the spirit is trying to be loud over the static, the static is still a bit much. So other tools were invented to filter out the static. I still think it's difficult to hear through those. And that's why I use the Necrophonic app 
on my phone. Okay. So what this app does is it plays sounds, not words. It plays sounds pretty consistently on the app. So spirits can take that sound and they can manipulate it so that you can hear their words. The theory is that we are all energy. I know how I said that we are all souls and or spirit or whatever, right? But all of that is still just energy. And that's why we still exist even after we die, right? Because energy can either be created nor destroyed. So yeah. yeah. So we go on. <laughs> so uh, if they are energy uh, in its purest form at that point, right? Then they can also manipulate energy. So this app here creates sounds that sound is electronic electricity is in general energy right so they can manipulate that that's the theory in my experience it works i know that the spirits are there i've encountered them i experienced them i've heard them and then i ask a question and i get direct answers that were properly related to my question so seems real enough to me that's awesome. You should try to connect with aliens with that technology because I'd be interested if they would come through the same way more of an earthbound spirit would. You mentioned something about a, a wild experience, and I, I do actually have uh, a, a wild experience that I could tell you about. Let's hear it. Okay. So there's a graveyard near me, a fairly large one, and funny, funny enough, is attached to a church, right? A church owns it. But I think what I'm about to say is surprising, given, given that the graveyard is attached to a church. I have learned to kind of take my energy and extend it out in a way that's like, hey, there's a beacon here. Spirits, come on over. Look at this. Come on over, right? And talk. So I do that fairly regularly. Whenever I feel like it's, it's necessary, I kind of make the energy visible. And I say, hey, come on, you know? So I was at this graveyard. I went by myself. I put the energy out. I mean, you kind of had to be there to believe it. I understand that. But as soon as I did that, I, I was trying to push it out further than I ever had. And all of a sudden, it was like the graveyard came alive, which is terrifying in the, in the middle of the night there by myself. But I heard groaning, screams, moaning, chains rattling, bones like clanging together, howls, weird scream things. And so I was like, you know what? I need to get the hell out. And uh, you know what I did though? I stopped with the energy thing for a minute and everything stopped. So I said, ah, that's weird. So instead of leaving, like I probably should have, I tried it two more times. Same thing happened both times. That is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> And is there any other tools that you use? Like, I've seen you use Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Yeah, they're super boring and the spirits hate them. All people talk about, oh, you're opening up a portal to the evil dimension and all kind of demons or whatever else that's, you know, because that's evil apparently, is going to come through attached to you and you're going to be attacked and you're going to be tormented and possessed. And... No. Spirits don't like those things because they could talk to you on a spirit box, right? You could even download that app on your phone that I was talking about. And then you get instant feedback. You ask a question, they can just speak the words. With a Ouija board, you know, they have to spell out each letter. So it yeah. takes forever. And they hate that. It's super boring for them and frustrating. I've also never had anything weird or evil happen. Well, I did once. <laughs> but I was trying to make something weird or evil happen. What do you think happens when we die? I believe that we go to live uh, on the astral planes, which is the spiritual realms, right? And I believe they were already there because being a spirit that we are, we're kind of a spirit encased in a physical body or even a meat suit, if you want to say that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So our spirit always exists on the astral planes or the spiritual realms, no matter where our physical body is. So we're already there, but when our body dies, the spirit doesn't die. The spirit can't die because it's energy. So we just become 
the more full realized spiritual form. I, I think that there are many, many, many astral worlds, far more than anyone would expect. So it's really not a matter of going to heaven or hell. It's a matter of dying and getting over there and deciding where you want to go. Now, I believe that there are deities and when you bind yourselves to them, they can decide where your spirit goes after you die. So if you bind yourself to a uh, deity in the Abrahamic religions, you know, um, Christianity, Muslim, Judaism, then that God can send you to heaven or hell. I believe that if you, if you bind yourself to him, then he is the one that ultimately determines your soul's destiny. But if you're not bound to a deity and you cross over, then you have all kind of options where you could go. That's interesting. And I, I think I agree with everything you just said. Um, and if you're religious, if you bind yourself to a deity, chances are you believe that you're going to heaven because of that. Because why would you be religious and bind yourself to a deity if you think you're going to hell? Maybe some people do that, but I'm sure far more would think that they're going to heaven mm -hmm. or they would that their God is going to send them to heaven. So that's the interesting part because I've never heard of that, but it definitely makes sense if you bind yourself, if you give your power essentially to someone else to decide where you go, that definitely makes sense because I do think what you believe is going to happen after you die. I think that is what happens. And I definitely agree that you go to this like astral realm and I think I would consider that astral realm to be heaven and hell in one, right? We have heaven up top and then hell on the bottom, kind of in the lower and the higher realms. And I think just as humans, we interpret all of that realm as, oh, it's heaven and hell. But I think it's definitely like a spectrum because where would the okay people go, you know? Like, it has to all be in one plane, but then if you believe you're going to, you know, the pits of hell, then maybe you do go into, like, this separate bubble, separate astral plane of the universe, and it's just terrible. And maybe if you do think you go to heaven, you go to this separate place, and it's amazing. But then maybe the people who aren't sure or kind of believe in just going to this, like, astral waiting room I guess I would call it and I think a lot of people kind of refer to it as that if they believe in reincarnation because I believe in heaven and hell and reincarnation which I think probably confuses a lot of people because they're not thinking of how they could coincide together but I think everyone kind of goes to this astral waiting room and it doesn't really matter which waiting room you're in which if you're in heaven, hell, if you're in the middle, wherever. And then I think if you choose to take part of your energy, because you're always, you always have a sliver there, like you said, your astral body's already there. But I think if you want to experience another life, then part of you kind of gets extracted back out of that and then placed wherever your soul kind of needs to be. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.